Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News Plus today for episode one of three in a very special series this week about supermassive black holes. I'm Trace, maybe you knew that already. If you are a subscriber of D News, you probably saw an interview I did recently with Chung Pei Ma, a cosmologist and astrophysicist from the University of California, Berkeley. She came over here across the bay to talk to us and we edited it down and released it in about five minutes. Today, and over the next couple of days, you're gonna see the entire interview. It was like 30 minutes long. It's super awesome. So we thought we would just share the whole thing with you. It was so great. And she talks about these super massive space objects in such an interesting and poetic way that, I don't know, we just couldn't keep it to ourselves. So today we're gonna to talk about how these things form, how rare they are out in the universe or not rare, and also how big they really are, because they're really big. Enjoy. Hey everyone, I'm here with Chung Pei Ma from the University of California, Berkeley, and we're gonna finally answer the question, what the heck are supermassive black holes? A black hole is black right. because even light cannot escape its huge gravitational attraction. Yeah. Uh, so on the sky, if, if there is a black hole, uh, it would be a black disk. What exactly is that black hole made of? So a black hole is actually very simple. It's made of mass, but the mass had been collapsed by gravity to a point. Okay. So it's the ultimate uh, a fatal attraction mm. of gravity. And when it comes to black holes, there are different sizes, obviously. We've got a regular stellar mass black hole, and then we have the supermassive black hole. Are, is it a continuum, or is it really just these two groups? Great question. We're still trying to answer that, uh, that question. Uh, we do know that the the puny, the little ones, the stellar mass black holes, those are better understood. They are the end state of a star. Okay. Stars are like people, they were born at some point, they age, they go through midlife crisis, and they die eventually. Uh -huh. Now, uh, very massive stars, stars more massive than our sun, will die as a supernova explosion, spectacular death and what's left behind will be a black hole. But those black holes typically have, you know, 10 times, 20 times the mass of our sun. Uh, so those, we have some evidence for that. But the ones we'll be talking about today are called supermassive black holes. Yeah. And these are millions to, today we'll talk about 17 billion times the mass of the sun. That's a and lot. These tend to not to be uh, found at random places, rather they seem to be lurking at the centers of every galaxy. Okay, so we've got one at the center of our galaxy as well, right. the Milky Way, Sagittarius A, I believe. Exactly. And so how massive is this kind of supermassive black hole? Well, again, that's another question we're trying to answer. Uh, clearly, they got to have gained a lot of mass uh, yeah. by eating up stuff over the cosmic history. But the one at the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, as you said, uh, is, has a mass of four million suns. We, we use sun, mass of the sun as a unit. Uh -huh. uh, and it sounds huge compared to these stellar graveyards, but compared to this spectrum of supermassive black holes, it's one of the smallest ones. Oh, man. So black holes can be massive, they can be relatively small. Are they common? All right, so only the very massive stars will die as a black hole. So our own sun, for example, doesn't have enough oomph. So okay. it will die as a white dwarf. That's but still, there are many billions, trillions of stars out there, um, probably you know, millions of you know, very massive stars. And then remember, every galaxy has billions, trillions of stars, and there are billions and trillions of galaxies out there. Yeah. So for even the supermassive ones, which live you know, they live at the center of galaxies, but there are trillions of galaxies out there. So yes, in some ways Just, they're common. So they're, they're not as rare as we would think. And how is it that they come into the center of a galaxy? Does the galaxy form around the black hole or is it kind of, kind of together? Like, how does that work? Again, this is a, you know, chicken egg is a, is a great current question. Uh, we believe they seem to evolve together. Yeah. And they, are so massive that they tended to sink towards the center of galaxies. And galaxies are very dynamic things. So galaxy, galaxy, you know, two galaxies will come together and merge to form a bigger galaxy. Uh, and the, their individual central black holes will merge to form a bigger black hole. Mm -hmm. So, but the new one tended still to sit at the center of the new galaxy. Oh, wow. 
So could you have galaxies then, because they're in this process, that might have two black holes near the center of their mass? Exactly. Um, in fact, the Milky Way, our own galaxy, is on a collision course with our two friendly neighbor, mm -hmm. the Andromeda galaxy. Yeah, we yeah. know we're moving towards each, each other on a collision course. Uh, and both galaxies have black holes at, at their centers, so we will merge. And, you know, don't worry about five, seven billion years later. Yeah. Uh, and it will form a new galaxy, and these two black holes will form a binary black hole. That's a Whoa. most natural state for it to be in. Let's go back to kind of your recent research. We've got this supermassive black hole that you've talked about. Can you tell us a bit about what you found out about these, these ma supermassive black holes? So we know that these supermassive black holes lurk at centers of galaxies. Another piece of information we had before was that more massive black holes live in more massive galaxies. Bigger things tended to live in bigger places. So we have been targeting, we wanted to find the most massive black holes nearby. Uh, so we've been looking at the centers of very massive, big, luminous uh, galaxies. Mm -hmm. So the one we found uh, recently, um, we were able to measure its mass, and it, it me measures at 17 billion suns. That's a lot of suns. What about other black holes? Are they, are they out there? We, do we know where they are? Should we be afraid of these things? No, I mean, and we do call them monster black holes, and black holes seem to both scare people and fascinate people, uh, but in the sense that if we were to replace our sun, let's just take it out and put a, you know, one solar mass black hole in the middle, okay. uh, the Earth's orbit itself will not be changed. Hmm. This is Newton's law, uh, yeah. except it would be very dark here. And, and that would we be uncomfortable. Be, right, so, and the black hole at the center of our Milky Way, uh, we live very far from the center. We're not at the center, we meaning the Earth. Yeah. We're not at the center of anything, sorry, yeah. people. Yeah, sorry guys. Uh, so we are uh, thou tens of thousands of light years away from our galactic center, so uh, don't worry about getting sucked in uh, from our perspective. Right. But if you get very close to the event horizon, you, you, you could see something spectacular. It could be pretty crazy. Okay, mm -hmm. just sidebar, did you see Interstellar? What did you think yes. about it? What did you think about it? Uh, I, I think it was a great movie. <laughs> uh, I was, you know, nice physics, yeah. and uh, I think it's beautiful simulations and stuff. It's, it's great stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always fun to see black holes on, yeah. on, in movies, you know, like the black hole. A little less, a little weirder, that one. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, how cool was that? Right? So awesome. Tune back in tomorrow. We're going to talk to Chung Pei Ma some more about supermassive black holes and event horizons. And many of you know that we've already committed to an entire week of black holes. So this is sort of a side project. Uh, if you want to see Dr. Ian O'Neill and I get into all about black holes and white holes and wormholes, check that out. Or you can watch a condensed episode with Chung Pei Ma over here. Thanks again. Please subscribe so you get all the D News Plus there is. And we'll see you next time.